Hello, welcome to the video presentation for our paper titled Taking ASCII Drawing Seriously about a curious diagramming practice in code. My name is Dev, and this project was done in collaboration with Brian Hempel, Kathy Chen, William Duan, Philip Goh, and Haijun Shia. When programmers write code, they sometimes make a diagram in the code to document it. We'll call these ASCII diagrams. These could range from a humble table to more complicated plots and to really anything that uses monospace text to show something visual. This paper is an attempt to study these diagrams as communicative tools. Specifically, what are their key characteristics? Like, why do developers reach for them? What roles do they serve? And what sorts of concepts do they show and how do they show it? And the hope here is that by studying the characteristics, the roles, and the content that existing in-situ diagrams have, we might be able to reimagine our programming tools into ones where diagrams and text can sit together in code and complement each other. But to begin to answer any of these questions, we first need a bunch of these diagrams to study. We have some anecdotes to go off of, um, and in particular, there's this wonderful blog post by Professor Rieger where he's collected a handful of them from different code bases. I noticed that many of these diagrams were from large open source projects, so inspired in part by this, uh, I went out and got the source code for a couple of big projects like the Linux kernel, LLVM, Chromium, and TensorFlow, and looked through the comments that might resemble an ASCII diagram. I was able to collect more than enough uh, of a sample for study, um, although these diagrams were fairly rare. If you're curious about how I collected them, I basically wrote a little script to get comments that might be a diagram. So like comments that were not just a block of text. And then I manually marked off the ones that I thought really were a diagram. What's nice about using active open source code bases though, was that we can just go get the git commit for the diagram and shoot an email to the person who put it there and actually interview them. And so that's what we did for diagrams that were authored in the last two years. Uh, we're very grateful to be able to chat with some of these authors who generously shared their time and expertise and they were quite diverse in location. They're from seven different countries and had varying amounts of experience programming professionally. We probed them about a couple of things, including a brief explanation of the diagram, their workflow in creating it, and the diagram's intended audience. And really, the goal here was to try to get at the first two questions we set out, the unique characteristics and the role of these diagrams. So let's go through each question in turn starting with the characteristics. Unsurprisingly, but importantly, ASCII diagrams are both text and visual. As text, they live naturally in code. ASCII diagrams exist in places where images or a richer graphic could not, in situ with the wide range of tools that developers use. As P1 put it, text is the lowest common denominator. And because of this, they appropriate existing interactions for text editing tools which meant that they were sometimes really easy to author. You can sort of just copy paste parts of the diagram easily. But also because it's a text buffer, a lot of the spatial structure is lost. And for aligning edges, it can be really tedious. To get around the tedium, two of our participants used special tools. P2 used Monodraw, which is a diagram editor specifically for ASCII. And to them, it was, quote, the best $10 I could ever spend. And P7 used org mode for Emacs for structured editing of tables. We also asked them why they didn't link to an external image or a richer graphic like in a Google Doc. Participants did not find it worth the hassle. Um, it makes it harder to share and is at a risk of going out of sync because now you have to uh, maintain two separate living things. And richer graphics can also sometimes be harder to author. And ultimately, they're incompatible with the tools already in use. So to summarize, because ASCII diagrams are text, they're naturally viewed, created, and manipulated within the wide range of existing programming workflows and tools. The second characteristic of ASCII is, of course, that they resemble something visual. This makes it much easier to represent some problem domains. Um, just to give one example for P4, they were really imagining uh, these blocks as something spatial. 
And interestingly, another thing that popped up is that diagrams were sort of used as an entry point into the code. Um, again, for P4, they made these memory layout diagrams above the test cases so that instead of reading through a paragraph of text, people can just look at them. So because they're visual, they might better capture the developer's mental model, and they can be used as sort of a thumbnail for the code to make it more approachable. We also found them being used in quite a few places in software development. So like you just saw for illustrating test cases, but also for being in code reviews and even in commit messages. Let's go through each of these in turn. Sometimes these diagrams originated from outside. They were either sketched in a notebook or on a whiteboard, and then later on reified into ASCII. Um, here's P3 who uh, shared a picture of their notebook, and some of these sketches eventually became the diagram on the right. ASCII diagrams were also used to record some previously undocumented information outside the code. Uh, so for example, P2 reverse engineered a file format using its hex dump and documented their finding as a diagram. You might remember P4's diagram of the memory blocks, which were attached to test cases. And P1's diagram is also attached to a test case for a network scenario. In our content analysis, which I'll talk about later on, 11% of the diagrams we examined had to do with a test case. Diagrams were also important for code reviews and for getting feedback. As P2 put it, I need to explain it well enough to someone else that they can look over my code and verify that the code does the right thing and that my understanding of the problem matches reality. It's also a common practice to find them in commit messages, at least in the networking sub-area of the Linux kernel, which P1 contributes to. The most common use case of these diagrams is as documentation for others. I won't go into too much detail on this, but there's an interesting conversation here on if the tedium of making these diagrams might make it more likely for them to become stale that we explore in the paper. Finally, diagrams were also used to help the authors regain context when they revisit their code uh, months or years later. To sum up, Developers create ASCII diagrams for several roles, to bring in offline knowledge, to illustrate test cases, for code review, for documentation for others, and finally, to help themselves remember. So with that, we have covered the first two research questions. And to tackle the content, we conducted a thematic analysis of a sample of these diagrams. Um, and specifically, we wanted to learn what kinds of concepts they show what visual forms they take, and how they reference and correspond to the surrounding code. The output of this analysis is a design space with seven top-level dimensions. Briefly, we categorized 25 different concepts, which are the technical ideas behind the diagram, like synchronization, state machines, data formats. For the visual forms, we have four top-level categories. The visual encoding is like the basic visual pattern, like a tree, or a linear sequence. Abstractions are explicit elision of information, like with ellipses. Annotations are labels that are connected to the diagram with an arrow or a symbol. Um, Subdiagrams are using multiple ASCII diagrams to, for example, show like the before and the after. And for correspondences, um, we coded the scope. So if the diagram applies to a whole file or just a single function, and also if it references any variables or constants in the surrounding code. Check out the paper for a complete description of the design space. But the most salient finding here is that diagrams are not just one thing. They're diverse in the kinds of things they show and how they show them. Um, we also have an online website where you can browse through these diagrams and filter them by their codes. OK, so having looked at these questions, there's a couple of common threads across our findings. One is that code and diagram have a close but fragile relationship. The diagrams sit in the code so they can specifically reference parts of it. But this close connection is also at a risk of disconnection. Our participants expressed concerns about documentation becoming out of sync, uh, 
Um, and you know, here our IDs are little help. They're they're completely oblivious to to ASCII diagrams. And so maybe we can investigate better tooling for making and maintaining connections between the code and the diagram. Uh, for example, one specific situation we encountered in both the interviews and the content analysis was using the diagram to show the result of a test case. And you know, here you can imagine uh, that a tool could can maybe even dynamically regenerate the documentation or, or the diagram based on the actual outcome of the test case. The second common thread uh, was sort of the stickiness of these diagrams. You know, as, as sort of a thought experiment, uh, we might ask if a richer diagramming tool could replace ASCII. And maybe, but what our findings show is that ASCII works because it's supported everywhere. As P1 said, it's the lowest common denominator. It works in the diff editor, the version control system, the bug tracker, and so on. Maybe a cloud-based development environment could replace them, where everyone is using the same set of tools. But it seems like the stickiness of ASCII is from the variety and diversity of tools that programmers use. Existing tools might be diverse, but they all support ASCII. Based on these two threads, the connections between the diagram and the code and the universality of ASCII, here's two hypothetical proposals for a rich diagramming tool. First, the bidirectional editing of diagrams as both a rich graphic object and also as ASCII diagrams, something where the underlying data format is just ordinary ASCII art so that all the viewers and editors can operate as normal but our idealized editor would be able to interpret the ASCII as rich shapes. Our design space suggests some common visual structures that should be supported, like sequences, graphs, tables, and annotations. And secondly, to reify connections between the diagram and the code. If an editor could infer the relationship between an ASCII diagram and the surrounding code, then we can do things like hovering over the diagram to highlight the corresponding code. Or the editor could warn us when diagrams and code go out of sync. Renaming in the diagram could rename in the code, etc. Persisting these connections can be very powerful. Okay, so that's a bit about the world of ASCII diagrams, their key characteristics, the roles they play, what they show. And, you know, as mentioned at the beginning, our longer term goal is not particularly to supplant ASCII for documentation, but to imagine tools that support the construction of code via diagramming, where the diagram is the interface for editing the code. We hope that some of these results in in-situ diagramming inspire and provide a grounding for realizing this vision. Thank you.